Well, hi there. I am here today with something that is not a dragon snake, but I wanted to tell you about a thing that happened. This is a Vietnamese giant centipede. You guys know a while back we covered these absolutely terrifying beasts. Well, this one is mine. What a horrific monster. <laughs> I'm so excited about it, but maybe not quite as excited as I am about the dragon snake, which I want to talk to you about today. This is a dragon snake. Last year, we did a video about five of the strangest pet reptiles that you could possibly get. Dragon snakes were not on that list, but they could have been. These guys are weird and they are amazing. Until recently, I would tell you not to get one. But now I am telling you not to get one yet. But before we get to why you shouldn't get one yet, and what it will be like when the time comes that you should, I want to talk to you just a little bit about these incredible and unusual snakes. Dragon snakes are in the clade Colubroides. That isn't the family Colubridae. They are in the family Xenodermidae. The clade Colubroides includes the Colubrids, but also the Vipers, Elapids, and about 85% of all snake species. And all of the members of this clade are more closely related to one another than they are to the Xenodermids. Dragon snakes, Xenodermis javanicus, are the only species in the genus Xenodermis. They have no close relatives, and they honestly don't look like any other snake I have ever seen. These snakes have very unusual head shapes with those big rostral scales and then a lot of smaller scales going down the rest of the head. Even the scales around their lips are not large. And they've got these dark little eyes, but honestly, that isn't what makes them so strange. They also have abnormally long tails for a snake, especially a snake that isn't highly arboreal. But this isn't what makes them so strange either. The feature that really sets these snakes apart is the three rows of raised dark scales that go down their backs. These are bonkers. And we don't fully understand why they have these crazy ridges. I know of no other snakes with anything even remotely like them. They remind me of the ridges down the backs of caiman lizards, but the animal these remind me of the most is the Borneo earless monitor. Should we do a video about them as well in the future? These snakes are notorious for being unusual, but also for being impossible to keep alive in captivity. So, is the dragon snake actually impossible to keep? And will it eventually become the best pet snake for you? To help you figure this out, we are going to score the dragon snake based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the dragon snake a score of one out of five. Dragon snakes are actually very easy to handle, but because they're so delicate, it is recommended to handle them as little as possible. They are also uninclined to bite or wriggle. They won't drop that tail. What they do when they get scared actually is they get real stiff and act like a stick. So, you know, that's a pretty harmless defense. They're unsurprisingly very interesting little snakes to handle, but there are other weird animals out there to handle. I recommend rubber boas and legless lizards if you want to handle something snake-like that feels rather odd for a snake. I'd like to pause for just a moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon and to point something out, which is probably a lot of you here are like, I've never heard of the dragon snake before. And I can tell you that our patrons at Patreon have known about the dragon snake for several days now because our videos are available to them early. I've noticed some of you comment, you're like, how did this person comment three or four days ago? Patreon. And that's just one of the ways we say thank you to our patrons at Patreon, our stinking rad fans and our rad fans for all that they do for us. So thank you guys so, so much. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. When it comes to care, we give the dragon snake a score of one out of five. The care for dragon snakes at this point in time is best left to expert keepers with deep pockets. If you get a wild caught individual, you should get it tested for parasites and other health issues as soon as possible. Then you should get it treated because something likely will be wrong that will cause your snake to die. 
After that, you're going to need to provide a cool, humid, but well-ventilated enclosure for the snake. I say cool because temperatures much over 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 24 degrees Celsius or 297 degrees Kelvin, can be fatal for these snakes in not a whole lot of time. They need a really deep substrate with a drainage layer and topped with a few inches of sphagnum moss. Altogether, this will hold the humidity that you're going to need really well without being so damp and wet that it could cause, you know, scale rot or other health issues. Just be sure there's adequate airflow. That's going to be really important. And keep things dimly lit. These are a largely nocturnal snake. And when you're a tiny nocturnal noggin noodle, the day is a dangerous place. They may eat some fish like guppies, and this can include mollies and sword tails, but their preferred diet are frogs and tadpoles. This may be a deal breaker for some of you, and that's fine. Getting one of these snakes is already a bad idea, and you shouldn't get one, even if you hate frogs and tadpoles. Even if you provide all of this care, which, you know, is very specific and you have to be really careful with it and it involves a veterinarian, these snakes are still very delicate. And that brings us to hardiness. When it comes to hardiness, we give the dragon snake a score of one out of five. Until very recently, I would have said that the dragon snake gets a zero out of five. However, in recent years, some expert keepers like our friend Scarlet Nightshade at Creatures of Nightshade, who actually provided the snakes that were filmed for this, this video, that made this video possible, they have been able to keep some of these incredibly just amazing snakes alive in captivity. And that's a big deal. At the end, we're actually gonna set some time aside for Scarlett to talk to you a little bit about these because obviously I've never kept one and very few people have successfully. She has, so listen to her. So all that said, if you get one of these incredible snakes imported after watching this video, I strongly recommend that you get a jar of alcohol ready so that you can preserve it after you watch it die. For real. On a happier note, as these keepers, these expert keepers continue to dial in their care, it is entirely possible that captive bred babies will be available in the future. And that should make this a whole other ball game. When it comes to availability, we give the dragon snake a score of two out of five. If you want to watch a dragon snake die, you could order one right now. You won't see them in pet shops or expos though. In the future, they may be available captive bred and again, that will change everything. They do lay small clutches of eggs. This means they will be very rare and very expensive even when they're being successfully bred. It also means that the wild population cannot support a ton of people buying snakes to put in jars, so don't do it. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the dragon snake a score of two out of five. The snake is expensive, but not insanely expensive. That said, it's a pretty expensive thing to put in a jar of alcohol. So plan to spend a considerable sum of money on vet visits, tests, and treatments. Really, just wait for them to be available captive bred. You aren't the one that's going to produce them. You're going to watch them die. So let the experts perfect their care and provide captive bred babies. They will be expensive, but a $1,000 live snake is better than a $300 dead one. Someday when you can get one captive bred, the enclosure you need won't be too expensive at all. This isn't a very big snake. You're gonna need a good lid because you don't want your super fragile snake to escape into your house that isn't set up for dragon snakes at all. You're gonna need a substrate that holds moisture, a nice big water bowl, a good stock of frogs and tadpoles, and then you may be very successful keeping a captive bred dragon snake. In conclusion, as of right now, we give the dragon snake a score of 1.4 out of 5. 1.4 is a pretty low score. It isn't human child level low, but it's pretty darn low. If what you want is a $300 snake in a jar, then a wild caught import dragon snake is the perfect pet snake for you. If what you want is a tiny reclusive semi-fossorial creature with crazy ridges that looks like a freaking dragon, then a captive bred red-eyed crocodile skink might be the perfect pet for you. But if you can wait a few years, thanks to amazing keepers like Scarlet Nightshade, a dragon snake might be a possibility as well. And so here is Scarlet to share a little bit more about these amazing snakes. Please listen to her.
Hi guys, my name is Scarlet Nightshade. I'm the breeder behind Creatures of Nightshade, and you saw my dragon snakes in the videos today. I just wanted to take a moment to explain why these snakes are better left to keepers that are able to establish them as wild-caught imports. Um, they are a very exceptionally fragile species, unfortunately, and the sad reality is that many keepers who haven't dealt with wild-caught imports before, especially one as fragile as the dragon snake, uh, they end up taking them in and they pass away very, very quickly. I would hate to see their demise as a species as, the, as a result of us trying to just appreciate them in captivity. However, we are um, hoping to breed them in captivity very soon here, um, in the next few months actually. We have high hopes for it, we have a group that we've gotten established, they've been doing well for a while, our oldest being a little over two and a half years old. So be patient, I promise you it will pay off. If you'd like to see more of the dragon snakes, you can visit our website, Facebook, and Instagram under our business name, Creatures of Nightshade. We do have a YouTube channel that we're starting to launch, but it's still in the process of kind of getting some content built up there as I just released it a couple weeks ago. So give it some time and there'll be lots of content. Our website does have tons of educational guides and other care information that you can find. So thank you for watching and Clint, thank you for featuring us. Thank you, Scarlett, for those really amazing thoughts and for sending the incredible footage that made this video about this most bizarre of all snakes possible. Please check out Creatures of Nightshade both on Facebook and on YouTube. They're just growing their channel now. Go ahead and subscribe. You're going to see some animals you're not going to see almost anywhere else. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon without a dragon snake. Based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, Hardiness, availability, ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> that was licky too. This isn't the Osprey's Rodeo. Well, my hand didn't work. I know, you usually use that one. I do, but I've been doing it in the safe way, and I'm like, oh, I'm not even using the hand that I usually fail with, that I go this way, <laughs> so I can go the other way. And I'm like, no, this is the defective hand. I'm glad you had it. <laughs> <laughs> People are always like, can you add Celsius? I'm like, sure. We'll cover all my bases. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> what? A, a noggin noodle. Noggin noodle. A noggin noodle. Noodle with a head. Oh, there you go. But you're a tiny nocturnal noggin noodle. What are you thinking? I'm just like, can we pretend to do be roll? <laughs> Okay, put your mask on. <laughs> Michelle, now film his hands. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's dead. <laughs> nice. Get my jar of alcohol. <laughs> oh, no. mm.